So you just bought a brand new axe or hatchet and you want to do everything you can do to get it in perfect fighting condition. We're going to cover the whole process from pole to palm swell. So the first thing you want to get sorted out is you got to figure out a way to hold your tool, whether it be an axe or hatchet. And the best way that I have found is using a wood clamp. I really like this uh, jet clamp because it's got these big plastic tongs on it there. You can clamp it in a wood vise, you can clamp it in a mach machinist vise, it doesn't make any difference, but it holds really securely and it's long enough that it will hold long or sh short. You can see when that's clamped in there, that is really in there good. And again, don't think you need to have a special carpenter's bench or carpenter type of vices to use these. You can see just any clamp-on style, any basic machine, machinist vise will work just fine. This little number three is just perfect for this. And this particular clamp that I'm using is the Jet 31 inch. It seems to be long enough to get all my axe handles in and it's called the parallel clamp. I'll put this in my Amazon store at wranglermart.com if you'd like to take a look at that. First thing we need to determine on our new axe is what kind of condition is the cutting edge in. Rarely are you going to find an axe manufacturer that is going to send you an axe that would, I would consider to be sharp. There's a few out there. Grand Force Brooks is one that that's an axe that's going to show up. You're probably not going to need to do a thing to. But most of them we're going to have to do a little work on. And that's okay. I don't mind. I think it's a pretty good deal if you can save save a few bucks and do a little bit of the work yourself. Because the only way to get a proper edge on an axe is by hand. No machine can do it. It's got to be a labor of love and just a lot of elbow grease. So let's bring on the official Wrangler Star electron microscope. We'll take a really close look up in here and see what we're dealing with. So with the power of the electron microscope, we can see here, this is a, this a particular hatchet here is a Prandi. This is an Italian made, not currently available in the States. That may be changing soon. But what you see right here is a really good factory edge. Look how consistent it is. You can see some small little bit of rusting coming in there. You can really see the strand, strandations, striations, strandations, striations of the steel, but overall really good. Look there to the right, you can see a little bit of wire, a little bit of burr sticking up, but for a factory edge, this is actually really, really good. Let's take a couple look or look at a couple of the other competitors. So here we have the factory edge from a very comparable hatchet, a small Baco hatchet. I know we've had some issues with Baco in the past, but when we look at it up close, it's actually a really good grind. It's very consistent. I would even say maybe, you know, from a factory perspective, maybe even a little bit tighter than the Prandi. You can see that it has been used a little bit. There's some sap particles and things on there, but it hasn't been used very hard. I think I just split a couple pieces of kindling with it, just getting my hands on it. But that is pretty representative of how it came from the factory. Now let's take a look at a uh, Husqvarna. So here's the factory edge of uh, Husqvarna Carpenter's Axe, and again, very nice. What we're looking for, you know, it's really consistent. That's what I like. I don't care so much about the wire and the uneven can see on the left hand side there some uh, little defects but this axe has been used a little bit but again I haven't taken a file to it or reprofiled it. By and large this is really good. Most of you guys that have bought the Husqvarna axis have been really happy with it. It's a good quality uh, Swedish steel uh, and a real value packed price. Really decent handles and just hard to beat for the money but that's pretty impressive. That looks really good. Now let's take a look at a Grand Force Brooks. So here's the leading edge of the Grand Force Brooks, and this isn't a true representation because this is a factory edge, but it's one that's been used pretty extensively by me and not really been profiled. But here you can see, even with all of the use, how much the finer the polish is. You don't see in here the, the strand, stranduation, striations, striations, excuse me, because it's been hand polished. It's really a fine, fine edge. Now this could use a little bit of work. We can improve upon this, but this is what we should be able to get our regular axes to with a little bit of work, but kind of not, not really a definitive comparison, but it is just kind of interesting to see the finishes up close. All right, so where to start? I typically am going to start with the handle, and the reason for that is because I don't want to deal with uh, a sharp, that sharp edge unless I absolutely have to. These, we're going to get these axes so sharp that the 
potential for cutting yourself is exceedingly high. I can speak from experience on that. But there's a lot of work we're going to have to do with the handle, depending on what you buy. Now, if you buy a Grand Force Brooks, they're not going to come with a varnished handle, but most of the other manufacturers are going to. Um, I haven't seen varnished handles really out of Sweden, but the American stuff, Council, well, even Council Tools, I don't know. No, I can't say for sure for all of them, but if it has a very shiny sheen on it, you'll be able to see it. You can look on the bottom and usually see kind of some dribbles where they dipped it. You want to get rid of that. The reason for it is that it's of such a hard surface that it gives blisters to the hand and it also makes it very, very slippery. Now don't fault a manufacturer 100% for doing that uh, because they do it um, for the appearance of it. If, once, if handles or axes are being uh, shipped to stores and people are handling them, you know, the oils from everyone's hands will make it look kind of what they consider to be unseemly. I think that that looks good. It gives it character and... and uh, um, all of that, but um, well, manufacturers haven't really caught on to it. It's too bad because it's such a wasted step. It's an expense, uh, has an environmental impact. It's probably not a very fun for the job for the guy that has to spray it all day long and not very healthy, and it's just not needed. Boiled linseed oil is a much better fit. So we, we got to go about stripping that off. So I'll show you a couple different methods that you can use with basic tools to get this job done quickly and efficiently. Some axes are going to have a leather strap on them. It's not really common. I have seen it on a few. You may or may not like this. I'm, I'm not particularly a fan of it. I find it to be kind of cumbersome. It gets in the way when I'm handling it. I'm always pushing it out of the way. It's not something that I would uh, want on my axe. The reason why they put hand holes in the bottom or these, I mean, maybe some of them think this is maybe a lanyard of some sort, but I'm not putting that around my wrist. It's too small anyway. But it is a good way, if you have axes, many of them, is to hang them from the handle. If you lean them up against the wall, sometimes they'll get a bad bow in them and it's almost impossible to get out. So hanging them on a nail or a peg or having even a strap in it, hanging it from a nail, uh, is a great way to do it, to keep it nice and straight. So there's several different ways we can use to get that varnish off there. All of them are pretty labor intensive and not very easy. I want to cover lots of different things because not everyone's going to have these tools. I guess first off, and the most drastic way, is to use a spoke shave if you have this. This is going to probably take the most skill and you're actually going to remove some of the wood, which may or not may not be a bad idea. I kind of like this method. I like the spoke shave because it gives it um, a faceted shape. You get those lines and it, it's really good for grip. It gets those high points, those ridges on the wood that help you to really hold on to it. Although you need to be, be very careful and be able to read grain and, and because you can really do a lot of tear out with this and it, it's certainly the most radical way to go. Another method you can use is a card scraper. Now this is a, a card scraper by Baco. And this is a good way to go. Now, this is kind of the tool that was used before the invent, in the, well, for it, we had sandpaper. This is a, a way that uh, fine woodworkers would use to smooth wood out. And you use, got a sharp edge on it. You file it on a, or sharpen it on a diamond stone, just kind of like we, similar to how we do our chisels. And that's a really good way to go, too, if you have something like that. This is a pretty inexpensive tool to buy, um, a card scraper. Another method is one of my favorite tools of all time. It's called a foreign hand. This is a, just a small file, and it's got a round side, half round on one side, flat. You've got a really coarse rasp, and you've got a fine rasp. And what's really nice about this is it gets into the contours of the head. And when you start getting axe handles that have a lot of shape in them like this here, you can see that how nicely that fits there into those round areas. And this is a really great a great way to do it. Although it doesn't leave the most desirable finish, it's pretty coarse and pretty rough. I'm not concerned about that. I'm looking to use an axe as a tool. I don't necessarily care so much about the aesthetics of the handle, but it does leave a rough handle that's really easy to grip. And I do like that, but it also collects a lot of dirt. So keep in mind. Uh, another method you can use, of course, is just really good rough 60 grit. This is a 36 grit sandpaper. Um, 60, probably even 80, 120 will even work, whatever you have. The problem with the finer sandpapers is they load up really bad with the varnish. As you start to incre create heat, it clogs them up and you have to go through a quite a bit of sandpaper and it's not my, not my favorite method and I'm not a big fan of the finish you get from sandpaper, which is it's similar to the four in hand. The other one is to use a really good sharp knife. And we'll, we'll go through all these methods. If you have a good heavy-duty bushcrafting knife that you can use at a, 
at a good 90 degree angle, we'll use that to scrape. And if you don't have a sharp knife, one thing that we all have that's sharp is a drywall knife, utility type of knife, you know, just little typical standard utility cutting blade. We can use those. Problem with those, this isn't, isn't one, but I'm just using it to represent it, is that they're kind of hard to hold on to, but you can scrape that way and we'll try that too. So let's, let's try the, some, a, few, the, the, a few of the methods and kind of see which one works best and you might be able to pick one that's gonna work best for your ax. All right, so make sure that your ax is really clamp that in there and you clamp, you don't want it moving around. If you have a sheath, it wouldn't be a bad idea to put a sheath on to protect yourself from the edge. This edge is not particularly super sharp and I'll be careful so I'm not too worried about it. If you don't have a sheath, you can just put some duct tape over it. But this is why I like to do the handles first and then do the edge so we just limit our exposure to it. So if we're going to use our card scraper, we'll just go across here to angle and we'll see that's starting to pull it off there. And you'll get the hang of it and get the angle down but you can see a lot of that varnish is coming off very nicely now you don't want to push too much it's better to kind of you'll find that angle and pull and once you get that angle it'll really start to pull it off nice now using a sharp knife is is very similar you know the same concept we're going to hold that knife on there and this is probably my preferred method just because you can really get a hold of the handle and you can see here how effective that is if the knife is sharp. Look at that varnish just peeling off there in those nice strips. I'm getting very little wood. Oh, it's just beautiful, isn't it? I can see I have the light overhead. Make sure you get a good lamp so you have good light so you can see all of that all the spots you miss because you'll see that varnish glimmering in the light. Oh, this is buying away my favorite way to go. It's just such a, just a good, fun process. A, a good sharp bushcraft knife, I'm using my beautiful deering, is uh, something that I think a lot of, a lot of you may have, have, have bought and you kind of maybe put it away in a drawer or bring it out when you go hunting or fishing or think it's just something to be used out in the field. But it is such a wonderful tool to use for woodworking around the house. I find myself more and more carrying the sheath knife uh, around the homestead and using it for all types of jobs because it's so much better than, than these, real, what, these tactical folders that so many of us have carried that are not very ergonomic or very comfortable. They look cool and they're fun to flip open, but when it comes to having it in your hand and having control over it and working with it all day long, it's just not... It just can't be compared to something like this. What a beautiful knife. And look at the finish you're getting behind that. Nice hand scraped finish, not all loaded up with sawdust and f it, like sandpaper will do. It's a wonderful, wonderful way to finish wood. And this is, to me, is more effective than a card scraper. So here on the other side, we can go with the, the spoke shave. Now this here, as I said, I think takes quite a bit more skill and you can actually do quite a bit of damage quickly with it. So be sure that you kind of start really light. Make sure you don't, don't uh, have your blade going down too far. You can always lower it, but you don't want to tear out and you'll have to really read the wood. See, there we go. So that's, that's pretty good, but still going pretty deep. Not my preferred method unless I have a really big handle because it, it is actually very quick. But you can see here, well, there we go. Spoke shave is a delightful tool to use as well. You can see we're removing quite a bit more wood than we would be with the knife or the cabinet scraper, but it is very effective. And if you set it light and use a light hand and take your time, once you get it dialed in, you have a, you'll have a nice finish on that. So you can see I've got it set very lightly that even the, the logo on there is taking a couple passes. That's what you want. Nice and smooth and take your time. You only need to do it once. Oh, it's lovely. Just lovely. All right, let's go to the other methods here.
Well, we arrived back home late last night from our trip to Texas, and man, it is so nice to be back home sleeping in our very own bed. Oh, enjoyed doing this video. I can't, was uh, very excited to get back into the shop, and you know, I thought this was, this was going to be wrapped up in one take, but well, as is my custom, it's going to go on. I, uh, I, I enjoy doing these videos, and I hate to get in too much of a rush. I, when I'm doing them, I kind of think... It, I always imagine you know, looking at that camera lens and having it there that there are 300,000 plus people inside there watching the videos and I just want to bring you along like uh, and, and just experience it and enjoy the whole thing like as if you were in the shop. So they do go a little bit long, but well, that's the way it is. Uh, there are uh, other videos that are going to be more concise uh, if that's what you're looking for. So speaking of videos, I have my most favorite. This is, uh, I think of all my videos, this is the, the one that I enjoy the most. It uh, was uh, made a tremendous memory, but Mrs. W, my wife and I, uh, using an ax and a crosscut saw, took down a very big second growth Doug fir tree. It took about four hours to do this and uh, documented this, and I think you'll enjoy that. If you're watching on mobile, you can click on the top right, and that will take you uh, to this video. Also, I always link these in the subject heading as well. On the right there, you can subscribe if you haven't yet. You can follow us along on our modern homesteading journey. Story of a family uh, leaving a very hectic life in the city uh, to a very rural homestead in the mountains of Pacific Northwest and slowing things down and bringing you guys along for this. Again, if you guys would like to see some of the items that I recommend and the tools, different things that I like, uh, I always feature those in my Amazon store. You can get those at wranglermart.com. WranglerMart.com will take you directly there, and I'm always adding and subtracting things there as well. That wonderful music that you guys uh, may have noticed when I in, in the intro was uh, created by my new friend Josh Merrill. Josh uh, is a gentleman I met in uh, Texas and a fantastic musician, and he gave me a CD, and uh, his hopefully will even provide more music that we can uh, be using in the videos. So thank you to Josh for that beautiful music. I really appreciate that and look forward to seeing what else you come up with. So I guess that's it. I've got so many ideas. I'm so excited and fired up to do videos. The meet and greet that we had in Texas was, was fabulous. Um, we expected there to be 20 or 30 people and we were just shocked i was afraid that the restaurant was going to run out of food uh, so many of you came out so it was very wonderful to meet you all you were all a tremendous blessing to uh, my family and uh, I, I don't say this lightly I'll, I'll tell you that i've never felt more welcome uh than we did in texas and it was a, a wonderful experience and and i can't wait to go back uh, i really enjoyed it and already am i missing the food so thanks for watching we'll see you guys over on part two and that's it. We'll see you in the next video.